So tilings and tessellations come up all over the place outside of mathematics. Um, anywhere from how bees build honeycombs to general crystallography and physics and chemistry. If you wanted to even, you could think of yourself as this tiling of cells in space. And yeah, so today, in order to talk about tilings and other recent developments that have come up in the past five-ish years, I'm gonna have to go ahead and go through just some general surface level baseline definitions. And I know that's not the funnest thing to get out of a math video, but if you're okay with that, you should just, you know, give me a thumbs up and tell me that it's fine. Or, you know, subscribe and stick around for more stuff like this. Uh, but anyway, we're just gonna get that out of the way this week so I can talk about some more fun tiling things in the future. Some of those I will reference as I go through some of these definitions here. But yeah, that is where we're going today. Anyway, so what is a tiling? So in one of the more abstract and general forms of its definition, a tiling T of a space S subset of Rn is a partition of S into bounded topological disks. Now, if you don't know what any of those words that I just sort of rambled off are in this context, I'm gonna go through a few of them to hopefully give you that context because as I said before, this video is about definitions. So yes. First off, we're gonna focus on partitions. So a partition is a collection of disjoint subsets of a space that union together to give the whole space with the following properties. One, the sets themselves are pairwise disjoint. Two, none of the sets are empty. And three, those sets union together to give the whole space, like I previously said. So for example, if S were a torus, what you could do is you could partition that by cutting the mathematical donut in half to get two half donuts. But in order to be completely rigorous here, we would have to make sure that we destroy one of the boundaries of the cut on one of the halves of the donuts to make sure that these two sets are pairwise disjoint. In the case of tiling, a lot of the drawings that we're gonna do are going to make it appear like our partition doesn't really care about the borders. So if it helps you think about tilings, you might wanna replace the first property of this whole pairwise disjoint thing and make it a little bit weaker by saying that any two sets intersect on the union of their boundary. But for partitions sake, it's more rigorous to say that your sets are pairwise disjoint. So that little thought about partitions aside, we should also talk about topologically bounded disks. Please try again or bounded topological disks because words are hard. Apparently. So first off, a bounded topological end disk is a subset of Rn that can be continuously deformed into an end disk. So if n is two, then some topological disks include pentagons, squares, triangles, hexagons, and those can all be continuously deformed into a circle, which is the two disk or- No. Well, I mean, a circle with its interior because it's a disc. You have to include the interior. When we're talking about circles, we're usually talking about just like the ring that is the circle and not the inside of that circle. So yeah. For what we'll be working with, we'll mostly be sticking to shapes like these and other convex polygons. So at this point, we've talked about most of the things that come up in the abstract definition of a tiling. But most of the time when we're focused on tilings, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're restricting ourselves to a finite set of tiles to use. These finite sets of bounded tiles are usually referred to as prototiles. And if you're anything like me, free word association just like turned on in your head and you went straight from prototiles to prototypes. And that's actually a really good association to have for these kinds of things because Generally speaking, we pick a set of prototiles not necessarily knowing that it can realize the tiling. That has to be proven. And as it turns out, proving that a given set of tiles realizes a tiling is not a trivial problem at all. But I won't get into the difficulty of that problem today. I'm gonna go ahead and save that for another video down the line. And now that we've talked about prototiles... Is this what regret looks like? Tell me, Nathan. I'm gonna have to draw tilings. Or is this it? 
I truly cannot tell. So going ahead and keeping this simple for my sanity, we're gonna go ahead and look at some basic tilings, just as examples. If you have ever looked at a piece of graph paper, then you have seen a tiling by squares. And we can make the tile set a little bit more complicated by allowing certain edge colorings to occur in the tiling too. You can also base matching rules on these colored tiles as well, and that will make the problem of tiling the space with these squares a little harder than trivial. Hexagonal tilings are also pretty common, and that goes back to the whole honeycomb thing that I mentioned earlier. And then to round out the pretty basic examples here, we can also have triangular tilings, and we can actually do this for any triangle, which is pretty cool. Then again, forcing certain edge colorings and matchings here would definitely make the triangular tiling case more complicated as well. For some variety in these tilings where we don't have just one shape in our prototile set, we can go ahead and take a prototile set equal to a regular hexagon and then certain rotations of equilateral triangles that fit within that regular hexagon. Now we know that this prototile set realizes a tiling because hexagons alone realize a tiling, equilateral triangles alone, any of those six that we have will realize a tiling. And then also because we can decompose the hexagons into those equilateral triangles that we have here, we can also do combinations of hexagons and equilateral triangles to form tilings as well. So we know that the possible tilings here are different. Well. Okay. This last example motivates the idea of looking at tilings as a system of points. One of the ways that we can analyze this system of points where all those points are tilings is by looking at a tiling dynamical system. A tiling dynamical system T generated from a set of tileable prototiles P is a collection of tilings T in T called points such that each T is formed by tiles in P. If a tiling T is in T, then all translations of T, otherwise known as the orbit of T, form a subset of our whole space, big T. And lastly, T is closed in some topological sense with respect to the tiling metric. But I'm not gonna talk about that tiling metric today because it turns out that just thinking about that tiling metric by itself and figuring out what's the right way to measure distances between tilings can be quite cumbersome, depending on how you decide to do it. In a way, taking the time to understand these tiling dynamical systems gives us a statistical idea of how free we are to tile a given space with a given set of prototiles on that space. And that's the idea I'm gonna focus on for a lot of these upcoming videos, that and just how complex the problem of tiling is, which I mentioned earlier. And so I hope that gives you sort of an idea of where we're going, and I hope that this video has given you at least some baseline for the things that I'll be talking about in these next couple of videos that are gonna be coming out over the next several weeks, I guess through February probably will be enough time to get through those. I decided to not go through the last square root video because I figured that if I wanted to talk about tilings, I would need to lay some foundation with a video. So that is what this video was. As I mentioned before, I know it was a lot of definitions, but the goal here is to, again, just lay a base so that I can build on to some cooler math things in some of the forthcoming videos. So yeah, at this point, we've covered the basic definitions that I wanted to get through in this video that concern tilings and tiling dynamical systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut myself here just because I don't think it would be worthwhile to push this video any longer to get through one of those other topics that's gonna take me anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes to talk about in full. So yes, at this point, that is all I have for you today. You forgot to tell them to stay for the bloopers. I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time. I'm just gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that, that'll be fine. Okay. And then he moves immediately and just ruins the focus. That's how this works. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. As always, I am Chalk.
Is this what it means to become one with your art? A tiling of a three-dimensional or a four-dimensional surface. No. Because surfaces are one. Just stop. S that is a sub. I mean, why are we interested in this? It's because it's been around for several hundred of years, hundreds of years, several hundred, several, several hundreds of years. 